Okay, what I want to talk about tonight, really quickly, is the single best way to get the most speed in your rendering process when you're using Cycles Rendering. Um, when you go to the rendering settings, the default is usually set to CPU. And, uh, and all the way down, buried in, in all of these uh, <clears throat> different settings and everything like that is a, uh, a little tab called performance. And if you go under here, um, you know, all this stuff can kind of stay the same, but right here is the tiles. And the tile sizes are basically the chunks, the macro blocks or, uh, of, of the image size that your, um, that your computer is going to be rendering. Um, so let's just take a look. We're going to do a quick test here. So the default to that, sorry, I scrolled away from there. The default to that is set to 64. And so I'm going to take uh, and just render with the CPU really quickly, then render with the GPU, and then we're going to adjust that setting, and you'll be able to see a major difference. So what I have here is just a simple uh, kind of a mon monolith thing and, uh, and a little uh, cube with a texture on it and then a, a sphere. And uh, we'll just... Um, uh, just hit render. We're going to do a single image here, and I've got a six-core, twelve-thread uh, CPU. So you can kind of see I've got twelve little rectangles running around here, and uh, it's going in the spiral. That uh, is the direction, the pattern that uh, is settable in that performance area. And I have not played with that pattern too much to see if there's anything that, uh, of that that actually would make this uh, any faster. Um, although I can't imagine it would make a huge difference. Maybe, maybe it would make a difference. Um, so we'll just keep going here. It says that this is going to be roughly about a minute and a half render with a um, uh, with a 12 core uh, CPU or six core CPU, 12 threads. And uh, let's just see how this keeps going here. It's getting the empty space here, so it's going to speed up. And voila, we are finished at 51 seconds. Okay, 51.64 seconds. So now I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to turn on the GPU, and let's go ahead and render the same thing. <clears throat> so the last one was 51 seconds. Let's just see exactly how long this takes. Now, one of the things that you might notice as we're going through this process is you'll notice that I had 12 little squares, uh, and in this case, I have one. And um, it's moving a little faster per square, but because I've only got one, it's actually doing a little less than... Um, what the uh, CPU is able to do with 12 threads. So let's uh, just let it continue on here and uh, it'll finish up here in a second. But what I'm going to tell you uh, is going to happen is we're going to actually be a little slower with our GPU uh, than we're going to be with the CPU. Um, and that's basically just because the CPU seems to really like the smaller squares. Um, but the real magic happens with a good GPU when you actually take the tiles and you increase the size of the tiles. So let's see where we're at here. And we've got a finished product of 1 minute and 3 seconds. So 63 seconds versus 51 seconds. So we're talking, you know, a difference of uh, 10 to 12 seconds per frame. And over the course of, you know, five, six hundred frames in a, in a scene or something like that, you're talking a pretty decent change in, in time. So we want to optimize this. So I'm going to, you know, kill this for a second. And let's go back down here, and then we can actually increase this. Now, because I know what's going to happen, I'm actually going to jump up to 256. But I found it was good when I was first starting to experiment. I went to 128 first and so on and so forth. But 256 actually really shows um, what's going to happen pretty dramatically. So we'll stick to 256, and then we're going to go up to 512 in just a little bit. First, let's render with our CPU. So with a tile size of 64, we had a render time of 51.6 seconds. So let's see what we're having here. So now you can see 256. Um, it's, it's starting the uh, renders, but the sample size is actually pretty high. It's at 256. Well, it's not too high, but 256. Um, so each rectangle takes a little longer to finish than you think. So at first, when I did this, I was like, oh, wow, this is going to go really fast. But then it kind of sits there and kind of waits on these, um, on these squares and just kind of like 
hesitates on them, if you will. Uh, and then I realized it was going a lot slower than I thought it was going to be. So um, let's see what we can do at uh, 51, if we're going to beat 51 seconds. And that's what's interesting is you, you really think it's going to, uh, but then it, it usually doesn't. So we'll see at 46, and it's still hanging out with all these uh, rectangles here, all these tiles. Okay. Okay, we're not there yet because it's still finishing this one in here. We got a reflection um, and that really seems to hang it up. Okay, so our time is 59 seconds. Okay, so we've actually increased our time, you know, by roughly eight seconds by increasing the tiles. And that's pretty cool. But now we get to see what, where the magic really happens when we choose the GPU. So last time the GPU did it in one minute and three seconds. Um, so let's just kind of take a look here and, uh, and let's render this and let's, let's see what happens. So now you can see again we have a single uh, rectangle, but you can see how quickly the rectangle is moving through. The GPU just really crunches these numbers a lot faster than the CPU does, even though it basically has one thread, if you will. Um, and the CUDA cores are really just crunching through the, uh, the animation really fast. And so let's take a look here and we just went 27 seconds 0.9. So that's basically 28 seconds that we've got on the GPU at 256. So that's actually a really huge um, a really huge change. We went from 1 minute and 3 seconds to tw basically 28 seconds at 56 whereas with the CPU okay at 64 we were running 51 seconds and we went up to 59. So we actually increased. Now let's go and choose 512 under the tiles and let's see what that does. So when I go 512, 512, go back up here. <clears throat> we'll just do the GPU for now and let's just see if this gets any faster and then we'll do a CPU uh, at the very end and, and see what happens. So here we go, render. This is GPU at 512 by 512 tile size. And let's just see how fast. This is a pretty big tile size. Now, I, I've been doing doubles. I suppose I could sit there and try, you know, experimenting with stuff in the middle. And I, I haven't done that. Maybe we'll do one really quickly and just see what, where it's at. Um, but let's see if this is a dramatic change in our, um, in our efficiency here. And you can see it hung around a little bit longer on that reflection. 26.5 seconds so that was actually a gain of just about a second and a half or so um, but essentially we'll just call it one seconds difference so we only gained one second going from um, 256 to 512 um, <clears throat> now what would be interesting is since it is getting better let's do a CPU really quickly at 512 and see what happens here and I bet you it's gonna even it's gonna take even longer um, than it did before. So you can see it takes big huge chunks but then it's gonna sit on them for a long time. Um, and so I bet you this is my, my guess and I haven't done this uh, I haven't I didn't do the CPU at uh, 512 in my previous tests. My guess is it's gonna be uh, you know a minute and five or so. Um, just just pure guess there. And it's really interesting how Blender just kinda totally locks up and doesn't even give you a, a, an estimated time until it finishes each rectangle. And of course, since it's finishing the rectangles uh, so slowly, it's not updating itself basically until it's finished. Um, so let's just see how this goes. Now this is just normal 1080p. Uh, so this is uh, 1920 by 1080 pixels. I'm not doing 4K or anything crazy like that. I just wanted to get some tests on, you know, what would be a pretty standard high def scene. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think it's been pretty definitive. You move up to a 4K or something like that, it would be even yeah, I think even more dramatic in many ways, um, especially all in all when you're talking, you know, 600 frames or a thousand frames in a scene, you know, just the change in, in 10, 30 seconds. I mean, that's going to be a massive uh, sa a savings in time over the course of your render. Um, so let's let's just see here. What's, we're still cooking along here. This is taking forever. And we're not done quite yet. Uh, let's see, boy, it's still, it's still really, I think, going and doing this chunk right here where the reflections are. 
I think these two chunks are really kind of taking up a lot of memory. Um, wow. Okay, there we go. So, oh, wait, no, oh, we're still going. Oh, oh, boy. So, we're at almost two minutes now for the CPU, and we're still going here. Okay, a total time of two minutes and two seconds. Okay, at 512. And now, finally, let's just see if there's anything to gain uh, on the GPU. I don't even think we'll do the CPU testing, because obviously we can see the trend is getting really bad. But I wonder if we do uh, 1024 tiles, if we're going to see any gain in the uh, in the GPU computation uh, computation <laughs> computations um, here. Let's just see what happens. I don't think we're going to see a vastly different um, time. I don't think we're going to get much faster than 27 seconds. But let's just see. Um, let's just see what happens. Uh, just for reference, too, the GPU that I'm using is an MSI. Uh, 70 NVIDIA 970 uh, with a three and a half gigs of RAM. It's technically four gigs of RAM, but really three and a half gigs of RAM. Um, it's not overclocked at all. I've got 16 gigs of RAM on my system only. And uh, oh, look at that. Uh, and uh, I've got um, uh, water cooled uh, Intel uh, 5630K six core processor uh, that is overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz. So even with my CPU overclocked, it still can't beat the GPU when you do the settings properly. Now if we take a look here, now at 1024, we've gone back up to 31 seconds um, <clears throat> for the computations. So, computations, I did it again. <laughs> the computations um, <clears throat> that, we're, uh, that we're seeing in the, in, in the GPU render. So basically, it looks like 512 is a sweet spot for this. I imagine that for some graphics cards, or maybe for a different signal, maybe if I went up to a 4K um, uh, animation and uh, I was rendering a 1024, it might be better than uh, the 512. Um, you know, I al always would recommend that you do some experimentations with, the, uh, with whatever you're animating. But essentially, I mean, look at this. This is a huge, huge, huge increase. Um, or actually decrease in time, we went at 64 pixels for our um, tile size. The GPU was at a minute and three seconds. And as soon as we bumped that up to 256, um, we went down to 28 seconds. Bumping it up to 512 pixels for the tiles only gained us one more second. So that sweet spot between you know, 256 and 512. Uh, the 512 seems to be the maximum size that the GPU really liked, but boy, did it make a difference. I mean, essentially, we cut our rendering time in half. So that's basically it. Um, the big, the big thing is to take the um, the tile size and do some experimentation with it. Uh, I would just start doubles: 64, 128, 256, and 512. Render out single frames and just kind of see what's going to happen. Uh, but essentially, if you're changing those tile those tile sizes, um, the uh, the CPU is never going to be able to keep up with uh, with cycles rendering compared to the GPU. As long as you work with those tile sizes, if you keep the tile sizes at 64, then the CPU is basically going to always be faster. Um, but that's again, like I said, that's a that's a overclocked, water cooled six core processor, and it still can't beat a three year old nine uh, Nvidia 970 once I bump those tiles up. So hopefully that's a, a you know good look at how that that one setting can just make all the difference in the world. I hope this helps and have a good night.